One of these five amateur cooks will become the next MasterChef champion. All have proven their worth. Get up here, please. Your section's going to pot. Last time saw the most shocking departure yet. It's Annie. I'm sorry. Today, they battle for a place in the final four as they take on the most feared challenge of all. Don't experiment on restaurant critics, you know? Save it for your mama. Go, 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 go. Ugh. This is where we're moving into some really proper cooking. Ah! Okay, I can't, can't eat that. Being on MasterChef takes more than just a love of food. Oh, yeah, yeah. The lamb's not cooked. It's been in there for literally half yeah, an hour. Yeah, because you keep opening the oven. Like the champions that have come before them, these five have committed themselves fully to the months of hard work the competition requires. Thirty-year-old Tom is newly engaged, but with all focus on the competition, any wedding plans will have to take a back seat. My expectations of myself are now through the roof. I scrutinise the way I work, what I do and the techniques I use to a far greater degree than I did before. My family think I'll win. <laughs> yeah, no, my mother's convinced that I'll win. <laughs> I just want to feel like I took the opportunity that I had and gave it a shot, because you know, otherwise you're always going to regret it. Vegetarian Jackie has left her family back home in Manchester and taken leave from work to follow her dream of opening her own Asian street food cafe. I couldn't give any more of myself to this than I am doing already. I pretty much don't have a life outside this competition now. My children actually said to me, even when you're here, you're not actually really here, are you? This is the first time I think I've ever really been so focused on something, so determined. I want to be in that final now. The closer you get, the more you realise your own potential of what you can achieve. That's it now. My future will be defined by food. This week, Tim resigned from his job. With the support of his wife, he's taking a risk on his future. The competition has just taken over my life. This is one of the most important things I've ever done. I've actually had very literal dreams where Greg and John compliment my food or critique it. Taking risks is what's gotten me this far, and I think it can get me further. I'm so proud of him. I just, for someone who's into food and cooking, this is it. I mean, this is the big thing. I'm very interested to see where this will take me, because I think it'll take me somewhere awesome. Intensive care sister Sarah is also moving between her family in York and the MasterChef kitchen. I never thought that MasterChef was going to be so hard. At work, I'm in charge and I'm unshakable. In the MasterChef kitchen, I have a pressure that I've never experienced before. It's absolutely mind-blowing. I have plenty of determination. I just need to believe in what I'm cooking. This competition means the world to me now. Carpenter James recently became a dad for the second time and is balancing the demands of MasterChef with those of family life in Milton Keynes. This competition means my future and my family's future. Being in the final five is incredible. So only a few months ago I was auditioning. It's an extremely difficult competition, so if you don't push yourself and try to create and invent as you go along as well, you know, you're never gonna get this far. That title has got my name on it. Now, after months of cooking, each of these amateurs is on the verge of earning a place in the final four.
today you are cooking for restaurant critics. They have the ability to make or break a restaurant or a chef in one single review. You have to deliver something simply superb if you want to even get a flicker of a smile out of these guys. You dream of being professionals. Today, prove it. You have one hour and 45 minutes, in which time you have to cook the food of your life. At the end of today, one of you will be leaving us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The contestants have each designed their own three-course menus in the hope of impressing their formidable guests. Tracy McLeod has been restaurant critic for The Independent for over a decade. Too often you get interesting failures and I hope we won't get too many of those today. Charles Campion is the godfather of British food critics and a prolific food writer. If something really grotesque appears on the plate, then I'm afraid I will say so. And Kate Spicer is a restaurant critic for The Times and The Evening Standard. It is completely unacceptable not to treat your ingredients with respect. I will judge this food as I would judge food in a restaurant. These people do not take prisoners. They will shoot from the hip. They don't like it. They will tell us exactly what they think. Restaurant critics, they look like undertakers. I just want our five to deliver food that forces a smile onto their faces. Tim's daring approach to food has resulted in some of the standout dishes of the competition. It's brave and it works. Inventive, that's one thing. Inventive and delicious, that's something very special. I think it's astonishing. Tim's influences are unbelievably interesting, but he's a risky cook. He needs to be himself at the same time he can't scare the critics. This is the most daunting challenge yet. This is going to have to be the fastest I've ever cooked, but it's also got to be precise. I've got to produce food that they would happily pay for in a restaurant. How much they'd pay, I don't know. Tim, your three courses today are? For the starter, a smooshy set, smooshy being the Danish take on sushi. Um, then for the main, I'm doing a mocha rubbed steak and chips. And for the pudding, a pumpkin pie with a frozen cranberry sauce. Where's the inspiration behind mocha steak? Mocha steak came from when I was in Hawaii and I was drinking Kona coffee with everything. And it just, I think it tastes really good with beef. It's got that roastiness, that little bit of bitterness to it that really goes well. How do you think restaurant critics are gonna take your food? Well, the way I see it, I think that restaurant critics are a bit jaded. They've kind of eaten it all. And I wanna give them something that they haven't eaten. By the looks of the number of ingredients on your bench, once again, you've probably bitten off more than you can chew? Not more than I can chew, I think just about enough. I've got a mouthful. <laughs> Sara has produced some exceptional Italian food. I love it. I really do. But on occasion, she has faltered. As a dessert, it's too dry. This is it. Today is my time to shine, to show my passion, my Italian love for food. I'm going to crack it today. It's my time. Sarah, what are you cooking for us? I'm cooking a tortino of baby squid and potato with a tapenade of olives and a stuffed monkfish wrapped in pancetta with artichokes and a uh, sfogliatina of figs and a zabaione of passito di pantelleria. What, what's the dessert? <laughs> it's a puff pastry and uh, figs glazed in honey and zabaione. Why do you think you deserve to stay in the competition, Sarah? Because I have passion, I love food, and I have the abilities, I just need a bit more time to show my potentials, and I can go further than this. What would life be like without MasterChef? <laughs> I'm not sure, really. I think it's already changed my life more than I thought, and the fun hasn't started yet. <laughs> Sarah, 
30 minutes gone. 30 minutes. Tom has had moments of brilliance. Beautifully cooked, technically amazing. I think it's a gem. Thank you. But recently, standards have started to slip. If it's not right, don't put it on the plate. The texture of the mousse is just far, far too dense. Tom has got a huge amount of work to do today because the last time he cooked, he was so close to being knocked out of this competition. That bloke, he's hanging on to MasterChef by his fingertips. They're going to be scrutinising me. If I make a mistake now, it's curtains, so it's a big day. Tom, your three courses are? To start, I'm doing fillet of pike, crayfish tails and wilted sorrel. The second course is cannon of lamb with the sauce made from quince. And dessert is chocolate coffee mousse and biscotti tweels. Your first course, pike, crayfish, watercress, sounds like a river. I mean, that's the kind of the way I've tried to put things together, is that things that work well in the same environment actually often work very well on the same plate. Chocolate mousse didn't quite work for you last time. It did not. Uh, are you confident, then, that you're going to get it right today? Absolutely. I know that I made mistakes, and today it's a way for me to show you that they were just that. I dodged a big bullet, and I will not be given the opportunity to do so again. Jackie has won praise for her outstanding vegetarian dishes. Get in there, Jackie. What a time to get it right. But she can get flustered. God damn! Come on, get hot. And her food sometimes suffers. I really don't particularly like this meal at all. Oh, I have been dreading cooking for the critics. <gasps> 12 plates of food in an hour and 45 minutes. I'm going to have to work like a demon. Jackie, your three courses are? Spicy green papaya salad in a rice paper roll and a paneer and spinach stack on a pumpkin rosti. And for dessert, I'm doing a plum compote and a vanilla custard. Rice paper rolls, originally Vietnamese. Today, more like a Thai som tam, a green That's papaya exactly, salad. That's exactly what I'm making, actually. It's one of my absolute favourite street foods. I think it's awesome. And I know that when you put the passion and the love into the food, it comes through. But did you have a dream that you'd be cooking for restaurant critics? I'm trying not to focus on panicking about who's waiting to eat the food, because the only thing I have control over is making these plates of food absolutely stunning and taste absolutely perfect. And I just really hope that they love it. Best of luck with this, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Luck. Jackie dreams of having a cafe serving street food that she loves. Well, here's her chance to see if it would work. She can't give herself too much to do. She's got to impress, but actually not get herself in a fluster. James has produced some exceptional dishes. It's like a cuddle from Neptune, that is. That is a nice big kiss of the sea. However, some of his combinations have failed to hit the mark. Putting cake in your mouth followed by frozen ice, it doesn't quite work. James, what are you cooking for us? For first course, I'm doing a tuna carpaccio with uh, strawberry and pepper sauce. Uh, and for main, I'm doing apple poached monkfish and dessert. I'm doing white chocolate parfait. Tell me where the idea for strawberry and tuna, and then apple and monkfish comes from. I've always liked the tuna carpaccio with uh, oranges and lemons, and I tried it with strawberry and I thought it worked well. Apple and monkfish was a uh, pure, pure mistake, and then taste it, I thought, actually, I'm going to do that again. Is it risky, James? Yeah, I'm taking a massive gamble here, but um, I think at this stage of the competition, you know, you need to push the boat a bit. Good luck, mate. I Thank don't know. You. Strawberry and fish, apple and fish, I don't know. <laughs> I never expected a menu like this from James. James is opening me up to food experiences that I've never had before and maybe will never want to go near again. We'll have to find out. Cooking for the critics today is hugely daunting. They do break restaurants, they do break Michelin star chefs, but they're not going to break me. I'm 
hoping that I will get something that really knocks my socks off. I'm looking for a cook who has got that sense of finding things that work together so that it's just a no-brainer. You know, that's how this food should be. When you're serving food to us, do a dish that you are really confident with. Now is not the time to start experimenting. Tom is first up. At first sight, Tom's menu looks quite ordinary, but there are some interesting twists of flavour in there. There's an awful lot that can go wrong. I, have you washed the sorrel? I rinsed it out, yeah. Because it tastes to me like it's got, well, it's got grit in it. It's a tough menu to do. There's a hell of a lot of work in there, but if I pull it off, I'm confident that they'll like it. The starter could have been harvested from a canal, couldn't it? Crayfish, sorrel, watercress. <laughs> Pike is a very, very tricky fish to cook. Tommy, you'll be on time? Yeah, I'll be ready in two minutes. Hi, guys. Tom's starter is pan-fried fillet of pike with crayfish, wilted sorrel and a watercress sauce. The flavours are OK. The pike and the crayfish work nicely together. I like the imagination. He's in touch with his environment. I never use sorrel. This is making me think I should. It's good. Where it slipped is it needs a thick watercress sauce, but it's an interesting dish. It's cooked that fish well. It's well seasoned. It's full of flavour. It's a surprisingly light dish. Good boy. Sauce too thin. Otherwise, bang on the money. How long are you going to be, Tom? Mm, 15, maybe. 15 from now? Yeah. I'm... You're supposed to have eight. I might be on time. You never know. It just depends. Yeah. What's better? Bad food or late food? Late food. The breast of lamb should be nicely fatty. Quince has quite a sweet flavour and turnip greens, very bitter. He's quite a high wire act he's going to pull off here. Where are your nettles going? I didn't use them in the end. Why? Because I actually tasted the sauce and it tasted really good and I thought there's no point in adding an ingredient to it that it doesn't need. What's left to go on the plate? Just literally got to put the vegetables on and put the sauce over it and it's ready to go. So just half of it. Tom, come on, mate. Sorry about the slight delay, guys. Thank you. Tom's main is cannon of lamb served with baby turnips, fennel and bacon, and a quince fruit sauce. The lamb is good. The crown is, is delicious, gamey and full of flavour. The crispy bits are nice. The other bits of lamb are perfectly sound. I think the sauce is a bit wishy-washy. Turnips have got a very strong flavour, but lamb can really stand up to him. He's got a good feel for food, Tom. When he gets to speed with sauces, he will be a very formidable contender. I didn't think those little baby turnips and that fennel would work, but I think it looks really nice with that sweet lamb. Hmm. You've got 15 minutes to make your dessert and you haven't done your biscuits. Nope. You can't be late on the dessert, mate. I know. OK. You can serve it without biscuits. What, coffee and no biscuits? Yeah. Ridiculous. Well, he's got no option, John. It's a tarted-up dinner party pudding, isn't it? Coffee mousse. I wonder if I wonder if it'll come in a coffee cup. Well, you need to get your dessert out, actually, in three minutes. Three minutes? Yep. Do you have the foam done for the top? No, I'm just doing it right now. Right. 
So you're going to sacrifice the biscuits? I'm going to have to, yeah. Well, then, what about you've got biscotti there? Yeah, I'll have to put one on. Take right, come on, let's go. go. Phone for the top. Let's go, 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 go. Where's the double cream? Come on, mate. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed Thank you. it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the meal and I hope you enjoyed the pudding. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. To finish, Tom has served a chocolate coffee mousse topped with cappuccino cream accompanied by a biscotti biscuit. It's the largest helping of anything in the chocolate mousse line I've ever seen. <laughs> and it looks really dangerous. I'm looking forward to it greatly. You don't need to be a restaurant critic to eat this. You need to be a miner. You need to be a geologist to break through. Is it over-frozen or just too it's dense? It's just the densest chocolate mousse in the world. It's exploded. And it's just gone everywhere. It's actually not bad to eat. It's just a very bitter, dry, chocolatey flavour. If I'd just been dumped by my boyfriend, I could probably eat the whole thing. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, God. I know, is it? Yeah. It's just as firm as it was the last time. Good flavours, but it's too dense. I mean, look, I've got to struggle to push that in. <laughs> oh, that is hard. <sighs> there was a tonne to do, and I didn't get the twill biscuit done in the end for the pudding because I just couldn't. Really, really, really hard. Tim, 15 minutes, please, before your first course. Yes, John. Thank you. Are you going to be on time? I'm where I should be, yeah. Where you should be, because the look on your face is one of absolute pain. I would not order any of these dishes if I saw them on a menu. Smooshy said, we have no idea what that is. Presumably, it's some kind of combination between sashimi and sushi. Is your smooshy ready? Smooshy will be ready in moments. Done. Tim, that looks great. Go and give it to him, mate. Yeah. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Thank you guys for coming. Here's your starter, the smooshy set. What is smooshy? Smooshy, the term was coined at the uh, Royal Cafe in Copenhagen. It's bringing together the concepts of Danish smorebrod with sushi and sashimi. So it's a sort of Danish-Japanese fusion cuisine. This is a tartare of mackerel, rye, and nashi pear. This is a salmon and goat cheese cucumber maki. That's monkfish liver on a toasted baguette with yuzu kosho, which is a Japanese spicy condiment. And this is yellowtail sashimi with a walnut dressing. Hope you enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Getting wow. close to Noma turf here, aren't we? I mean, without even putting any in my mouth, I can tell you this is a, a feat of execution. The fried bread, bit of yuzu and the monkfish liver on it, is delicious. The very strong fish pate in this cucumber. Feisty flavour there, full on. And then this bizarre fishy porridge. That looks like something that a seagull would deliver into its baby's mouth, doesn't it? Mmm. I love that sour plum remoulade down the middle with beetroot juice and the yellowtail together. That monkfish liver on toast is beautiful. And the idea of beer with mackerel pate inside a shallot, I think it's just amazing. Mm, 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 mm. That is delicious. This is the stuff MasterChef <laughs> champions are made of. Brilliant. I spotted him right from the start. I've got a nose for these things. <laughs> you've got chips to do, you've got steak to do, and you've only got 15 minutes. Yes, John. I've got to say, I think your style looked amazing. Thank you. But I'm worried about you getting your main up on time. So am I, but I'll work as hard as I can. Actually, I'm more worried about the fact of coffee and steak. No, no, that's delicious. Mocha steak, that sounds like a bad idea. Get your plates organised, let's go. Any other garnish? Nope. Good, you got to go. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hi. 
Thank you. Remain careful, the plates are hot. Tim has served a main course of mocha steak topped with caramelized onion with a miso and matake mushroom sauce and dashi fries. He's gone for a playful take on the burger, so it, it reads Japanese, but it looks good old US of A. Mmm, mm. that beef, it's perfect. And so unbelievably tender, like butter. But the coffee or mocha has completely overwhelmed any of its own natural flavor. It doesn't shout coffee to me. I take issue with the fries because they're very floppy and I don't think anything will save non-crisp fries. There's so much skill in this guy, but somewhere along the line, he's lost his sulfurness. And I can't forgive him for the chips. I don't like it. I like the beef, but it's got a strong coffee flavour and it just feels weird to me. I don't think I'm as disappointed as you are about it. I thought it was always going to be a risk and I don't think it's a bad risk. Yeah, I don't like that sauce. So seriously, what are you going to do about dessert? I'm going to make the pie. But in 15 minutes, cooked and finished and ready to go. That's right. Pumpkin pie with frozen cranberry sauce. Just the language of that menu makes me think it's come from the freezer cabinet of a cheap supermarket. Wrong. What's occurring? Puddings are in the oven. The and they'll, they'll be ready in five minutes, will they? No, they'll be ready in ten minutes. I'm going to have to tell them I'm running behind. guys have enjoyed the meal so far. I'm really terribly sorry, but the dessert is going to be about five minutes late, so sorry about that. <sighs> get your sorbet out of your freezer, get ready to go, get the rest of your plates ready to rock and roll. Okay. Come on, mate, come on, mate. come on, otherwise we're just gonna... All right, it's coming. Tell what you got. Pie's out now, let's go. Okay. On the plates. OK. Go. Sorry again about the wait. Here is your dessert. Tim has made a pumpkin pie with frozen cranberry sauce, caramelised orange and a Belgian ale and white chocolate sauce. We should have known from what Tim's already produced that it wasn't going to be so simple, because this isn't pumpkin pie, it's a sheet of phyllo pastry with some mm. kind of creamy pumpkin filling. Even I, as a non-liker of pumpkin pie, feel vaguely disappointed now. <laughs> <laughs> that pumpkin is just f nutmeg. It's nutmeg, isn't you it? You know, nutmeg is something that should be used with caution. Mm. What is he doing? Don't experiment on restaurant critics, you know? Save it for your mama. It's a very poor sorbet. It tastes like crushed ice. And but that's to be fair to very Tim, nearly all it tastes of. He didn't bill it as a sorbet. He billed it as frozen cranberry. Well, then I don't like it for that. Tell you what, though, this candied orange is absolutely perfect, isn't it? A little bit of sauce. Actually, rather a good mouthful. Is it? Mmm. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> well. I've got the innards of what would have been a really good pumpkin pie. I've got a sorbet that's fruity, it's all right, but white chocolate and beer is beautiful. The sorbet's a bit weird on the side of it, but actually the fruit's still coming through it. It's not right. He ran out of time. Was he experimenting with time? Well, he might have been experimenting with time, but unfortunately the experiment failed. <laughs> tough. The dessert was late and it was bad. <laughs> I'm feeling a mixture of delirium and exhaustion and satisfaction and um, dread. There might be a clue that Sarah likes Italian food lurking in there somewhere. This reads like your dream lunch on a Tuscan holiday, doesn't it? That someone will bring out mm. big, brimming bowls of this kind of stuff. So I hope she's got the similar generosity in the way that she's presented it. Four minutes, Sarah. 
Quattro minuti, per favore. Uh, yeah, coming, coming. I love the look of Sarah's starter. It's really lusty and generous. Baby squid, potatoes, served with butaga. Fab. One minute. It's coming. Sorry, we've got to go, mate. We've got to go. No, let's go. Let's That's do it. Fine. Let's go, do it. Go. Smile, remember? Yeah. Sarah's starter is a baby squid and chive potato tortino stack topped with olive tapenade and served with botaga fish roe and micro cress. The menu read much more of a sort of Tuscan summer lunch and this looks like a posh Italian restaurant. The baby squid it's got a very distinct texture, and to compress it like this with a potato, it, it all feels just very dense. But there's some lovely, delicate little flavours going on. The homemade tapenade's really quite good. There are definite skills on show here. Trouble is, they're a little bit misdirected. The wonderful tapenade, black olives on top, perfectly cooked squid, and that salty batag around the outside and onion cress. It looks fantastic and it delivers beautiful flavour. John, I love this. I absolutely flaming love it. It'll be interesting to see whether she can bring pancetta wrapped monkfish and aromatic potatoes to another level, which makes it worthy of a competition like this. It's quite difficult to cook, too. Getting the middle done whilst everything else stays untough is quite tricky. Come on, Sarah, 60 seconds. Yes, John. Sarah, time's up now, mate. Come on. Thank you. Enjoy. Thanks. For her main course, Sarah has made pancetta wrap monkfish filled with rosemary, thyme and garlic paste, served with rosemary-infused potatoes, artichoke hearts and a caper and herb tartar sauce. I have to say, it smells great. The monkfish is perfectly cooked, but the stuffing is harsh and raw and bites your throat. Essentially, rosemary and garlic pounded together. It's like being mugged by a rosemary tree. The little crispy bits of potato dropped into the tartar sauce are really rather good. Mm -hmm. mm. Love, love, love bit of fried artichoke. They look fabulous. She's cooked them well and they've got a lovely crunch to them. As a whole dish, it's got some flaws. Bits of it, though, are really quite nice. Of course, it's powerful with herbs. Got a nice rosemary running through the potatoes. There's a huge amount of work going into that. I think it's delicious. I think that fish could just do a little bit more seasoning. Bravo, bravo. But you have now just 13 minutes, Sarah. How long are you going to be, Sarah? Only three minutes or so. You've got two. Oh, dear. Come on, mate, come on, we've got to go on it. I know, I know, I know. I just don't want to look bad, that's all. Looks nice, mate. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Sarah's pudding is a sfogliatina puff pastry filled with figs, sabayon, and served with a raspberry coulis. I really love how this looks. It's sunshine on a plate. Nice crispy pastry and it's delicate. And the Zabaglioni has a good, rich flavor to it. 
the coolie is oversweet and I could have done with a bit more of the zabaglioni, but overall I think she's made a pretty good stab at it. It's a very accomplished pudding. It's jolly nice. Strong in fruit. There's booze coming through. The figs are really nice and juicy. Pastry soft. This tops it all, really. I know why you love it, Mr Wallace. Sweet. It is really sweet. Say all that, I quite like it. I put heart and soul in this. I really have. I hope it pays off, really. I really do. One of those menus where there are a good many less familiar items. Very complex. It's global vegetarian cooking. I'm looking forward to this. It's a big shift away from where we've been. I think what's going to make or break Jackie's menu is her spicing. I'm going to need a cluster. Can I get a cluster? Oh, much cleaner. You got a minute to go on these, please, okay. Jackie. Looking good, Jackie. Looking good. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. How pretty. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Yes. To start, Jackie has made spiced papaya rice paper rolls with carrot, green beans and chilli, sprinkled with toasted rice. Wow, wow, blimey. Wow. Oh, that is really hot. Wow, I'm on... Whoa. That's it. Do you know what that is? That's a chilli hiccup, that is. There it goes. You're going to have those for about two hours. Look, there you go. That's, I love that. That is really, really hot. I love that spicy hot. I can cope with it just. And I love the food, but that is too hot for most people. I can't stop it. You can't stop it now. That is lovely. It's sweet. There's a little bit of salt in there as well. There's the crunch of the nut but the, and, and, like, lime flavour. But the heat... Wow. She has got 15 chilies in that mix. For most people, that is going to frighten them, it's going to hurt them, and it's a little bit too much chilli. Mm, I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Great big mouthful of raw chilli. Mm. I've got hiccups. Mm. I can't, can't eat that. I quite like to spit mine out. <laughs> that is really hot, isn't it? That is too hot for a starter because your tongue's in tatters, hiding in the back of your mouth somewhere. This is one of the hottest things I've ever eaten. I can feel my lips going into a trout pout. <laughs> <sighs> Judging by how much my hands are burning from chilies at the moment, Em, I think it might have been a little hot for the Western palate. That could be an issue. She's got four minutes to get her mane out. It sounds like she's got another 15 minutes of work. <laughs> and after that, she hasn't even started her dessert. So I really don't know what's going to happen with Jackie here. She is in free fall. At this point, I don't see how she's going to pull it back. No way. Jackie, Jackie, yes. we need to know how long it's going to take because the time's up now. Right, it's going to take me three minutes. If it's going to take longer, say so now because otherwise we'll stop it after three minutes. Go. All yeah, right. Yeah, right. How long is it now? We've been waiting about ten minutes now. The reason we're waiting is to allow the chilli burn to <laughs> relax. Do you think she heard us howling? Howling in pain, yeah. 
Come on, Jackie, stay calm. Come on. Okay, yeah. Stay calm, get it up. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Come on, let's go then. Quick, 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 quick. Apologise for the wait that you've had. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. For her main course, Jackie has made a paneer and spinach stack served on a pumpkin and coriander rosti topped with coconut cream and accompanied by a tamarind glaze. This looks delicious. Can't wait to tuck in. Just slightly nervous. I can see chilli in there. I'm getting ready to hiccup again. This is where we're moving into some really proper cooking here. The firm paneer with the lovely toasted seeds on them. The spinach, spicy, gathering together lots of different textures. This is actually a pretty sophisticated plate of food. Nice rosti, bit of chilli creeping back in there. Big flavours. It's a really sound, well thought through plate of food. It was the spiciness of Jackie's starter that let her down, but it's the spicing of this dish which is really showing her strengths. Mm. I think the spicing in the spinach is very good. I love that sour tamarind sauce with that really sweet coconut. I think it's balanced very well. Lovely. Really nice. Really good. Jackie. Yes. Officially, you actually have one minute to get your dessert out. Officially? Because you are so late now with your main course. Wow. But we are going to give you 12 minutes to do something. OK. Ah! Come here. Can we have a look? Stop. 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 What have you done? Oh, right, OK. She's done herself really badly here, guys. Stop. I'm going to stop you cooking. I'm going to stop you cooking, OK? Come here. Come on. Too dangerous. Okay. Okay, for the off. It's too dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. It's fine. Listen, I've had a few accidents in my life where I've been pulled off service as well. I'm trying to go home because I've been clumsy. No, it's not about at all. Just give yourself just give yourself a bit of peace. OK? Come on. Hi. I'm really sorry. I won't be able to serve you dessert today. Um, I've had a bit of an accident. Uh, I just sliced into the top of my thumb quite deeply. It actually goes... Stings a bit, too, on it the fingers, does. doesn't it? Well, I grated that one. <laughs> That's a real shame, because we really enjoyed your main course. It was, it was the dish of the day for us. Thank you. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, oh, we really that, did. That's fantastic. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Right, thanks. It's been an honour to serve you. All right, thanks. Poor girl. Mm -hmm. Really, really wanted to make John proud today. I feel like I've really let him down by doing this. <laughs> 20 minutes for your first course. Thank you. James's menu has a very strong fruit theme. I suspect this may be a menu that tastes better than it reads. James's starter is the worst I've ever seen. It's so unappetising. Raw tuna and strawberries. Strawberries and raw tuna. Yeah, it's just... They really don't sing together, do they? No. Come oh, on, mate, you've got about 60 seconds left. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. James's starter is tuna carpaccio with strawberry and pepper sauce 
served with a baby leaf salad. The combination of the tuna, the strawberry and the black pepper sort of creates a weird sort of taste of fag ash in my mouth. I would have thought anyone with half a taste bud would have had one nibble of one of his test servings of this and said, I think maybe you should lose the strawberry. The salad tastes very oily and tastes very flat. I, I, I don't feel that this works in any shape or form. It's a sad end to a noble piece of fish. I can't get the strawberry and the tuna to work together. Right, young man, you've got 15 minutes for your main course. Get your thoughts together, your biscuits ready for your dessert, and you're safe as houses. The main course looks good, but I don't know how well apple was going to work with monkfish. Just wondering about poaching monkfish. It's classically a fish that you roast to get the best out of it, isn't it? Don't let your sauce over reduce because you don't want to lose it. 20 seconds left. James, please, yeah? Fish OK? Yep, it's all good. Just take two, mate. Thank you. James's main course is apple poached monkfish on a bed of chard and bacon served with potato fondant and a leek puree. This monkfish looks like something you might find in a jar in an autopsy lab, doesn't it? I'm not getting a great amount of flavour from this monkfish. I'm not getting apples. It looks like it's not going to taste very much. And guess what? It doesn't. The nicest thing to eat is the chard and bacon. Mm, yeah. The leek has been pureed beyond recognition. It just looks like baby sick. No, I'm never sticking an apple near a fish, ever. I won't even put them in the same shopping basket. Don't like that at all. James said this dish was born out of a mistake. It is a mistake. James, the old twill's the right colour. Give the smell a bit. Bad. That's the word. You've got 13 minutes for your dessert, OK? Well, I'm going to do another set as well, if I've got that time. Frozen white chocolate parfait with macerated strawberries and a chocolate and pecan twill. Yummy. Six minutes, new twills. A better. Time, please. 90 seconds. For dessert, James has served a white chocolate parfait with macerated strawberries and a chocolate and pecan twill. I like the look of this. It's sweet and simple. It's good. Quite refreshing that there's no um, tuna with the strawberries, all I can say. The parfait's nicely made, the little twill biscuit's very nice. Nice, boozy, fruity poke. And the whole lot works together really well. It's a simple, satisfying, nicely delivered pudding. High praise, really. No, that's good. Cold, creamy. Bit of chocolate, bit of toasty nut. No, that's lovely. The parfait's made beautifully. It's good. Now, when I taste a strawberry, all I can taste is tuna in the background. <laughs> the dishes that I did, very risky. But I'll be fair, I thought I nailed them. John, I'm exhausted. I am absolutely exhausted. I'm full up. <laughs> I'm happily full up. We've just tasted 15 different dishes. Five great cooks. 
We've only got room for four, though. Tom's starter, for me, was one of the best dishes of the day. Ooh. Very difficult things to get right, that real taste of fresh water, and he did a great job. The lamb was a really lovely, lovely dish. But for the second time running, he's, he's given us a, a sort of moose-type affair that's as dense as a brick. So two courses from Tom, very good. Third course, dessert, not. I think I put in enough hard work today to warrant continuation of this competition, but, you know, you just, you just never can tell. Tim is dabbling with the idea of the combination of flavours. He is sitting right on that edge of risky to, to dangerous. I loved Tim's starter. Smooshy, just a myriad of, of flavour and texture. I thought that was absolutely stunning. Tim's main course, steak with coffee on it. I really disliked the sauce. I actually quite enjoyed it. Pudding didn't work at all. He promised us pumpkin pie, so we ended up with pumpkin in a ramekin. What Tim's saving grace is, he regularly delivers thought-provoking absolute brilliance. I can't judge whether I've done enough or not. Final four would be awesome. That's a very small number. Sarah was one of our strongest contestants today. I really liked the baby squid with the uh, potatoes. The monkfish, I think, was a little bit rough around the edges, but all the flavours were great. And uh, I like the figs as well with the pastry. I thought that was really good. Sarah was strong today. I would be disappointed with myself if I went home today because there's so much to learn, so much I can show. We have two people in the competition who are at risk of going home. James and Jackie. Well, I agree. Jackie, whoa. I didn't mind all the chilli inside a papaya wrap. I like it, I think it's bold. To make you hiccup and, you know, to hear the critics in here doing the same is just a little bit too much. I loved that paneer and spinach stack she did with the pumpkin rosti. It was really good and the critics said it was the dish of the day. Yeah, but it was a great dish, no doubt about that. Jackie did not deliver a dessert today. She got her timings wrong right from the start. She was so behind time, it wasn't funny. Timing is one issue, but combinations of food is another issue. The idea of tuna and strawberry sauce right from the off is impossible in my mind to pull off. Monkfish and an apple was just awful. Fruit and fish once again. <sighs> The dessert from James I thought was great. I like the concept, strawberries and ice cream, that's what it was, done in a very sophisticated way. Good dish. Lovely dish. Lovely dish. Which one today has proved they can't go further in the competition? I don't know. I don't know. James? Fish with fruit twice? No one's championed James more than you have, for crying out loud, John. Oh, yes, yes, I get that. But it gets to the stage where a concept is fundamentally flawed. I would rather have somebody who was late delivering their food but delivers their food and you can eat it or you enjoy it. I want food you can enjoy. I'm really worried that Jackie could actually have a breakdown the way she cooks. And she can't cook like that. She can't work like that. Because although the poor kid cut herself twice today and couldn't finish, she would never have finished anyway. Look, mate, we have got to see eye to eye on this. We've got to come to an agreement. I really want to be in that final so badly. I don't want to be out because I'm clumsy. I worked hard in there and I got them plates out. And if I go home, I'll be gutted. Today, we have seen some extraordinary food. For us, a really, really tough decision.
with the help of the critics and their comments. The person leaving us. It's James. I'm sorry, James. You've got to be extremely proud of yourself. You will be in that kitchen if you really want it. You really will. Thank you so very much for everything you've done and everything you've cooked. Cheers. And thanks. Well done, guys. Cheers all. Tried to be clever, tried to be creative. Didn't work. Oh, yeah, it's been fantastic. You know, the whole thing. Like I say, I've done some pretty amazing stuff. But, you know, when your time's up, your time's up. It's amazing, final four. Oh my God, I want this so badly now. I need to stay focused, I need to stay on my game, just to stay in the competition, to keep having this in my life is just, it's a wonderful feeling. The passion and the work is paid off. Amazing, really amazing. I didn't think I could make it this far, but now maybe, I don't know. The sky's the limit, I guess. <laughs> Congratulations, four extraordinary cooks, and what comes up next is going to be so exciting. Bring it on. Next time, the last four amateurs have to overcome their greatest weakness. Pastry. You've got to have it in your soul. You've got ten minutes before you need to serve the Jig and Duchess. And that's not me and Greg. That is incredibly unpleasant. These are probably the most important guests we've ever fed. Please don't be late. Come on, guys, let's go, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 